Piers Corbyn from weatheraction.com, long range weather and climate forecasters. And today I'm firstly going to report on important weather events that have taken place in September and early October in Britain, Europe and the United States of America. Then we're going to explain some new findings about uh, how Sun-Earth magnetic links work. And we'll give a summary of a few things going to happen in October in Ireland, Britain, Europe and America. And uh, we'll then advertise Climate Fools Day, which is happening this year on Wednesday the 26th of October in the House of Parliament at one o'clock onwards. Okay. Now, our September forecasts have gone extremely well, uh, both in the general views and the timing of events, which under Solar Lunar Action Technique 6B has been extremely good. Uh, in America, we got the general picture correct across the USA using our new form of presenting on our US weather maps, where we had the basic view of rain and thunder floods in the east, uh, Texas heat and the west being dry, uh, accurate, and uh, the specific events of extra thunder and floods were well timed. And the end of the month was excellently forecast um, uh, in, in a lot of detail, and that is, map is, is available on the website. And we gave specific comments about the uh, worsening or improving situation as it changed uh, in Texas, where there were wildfires uh, very extensively. Okay. For uh, uh, Britain and Europe, the uh, forecast went uh, also, also very well. Um, the early part of the month was interesting in, in uh, Ireland and Britain because it was hit by remnants of tropical storms from the USA. Um, the first one, remnants of Hurricane Irene, which we had forecast extremely accurately in its origin and track in America, arrived uh, in Britain to coincide with a long-range forecast of a storm hit. Um, and people must wonder, well, how do we know that storm was going to come? Well, the answer is actually they, they do come and they sort of hang around, if you like, uh, near near British shores until the door opens and the door opening if you like is to do with our solar lunar magnetic uh, factors which enable these things to come in. But what happened, Irene just travelled perfectly and tracked just south of the butt of Lewis. Um, now that is difficult to show maybe. The butt of Lewis is the top here. It tracked just south of that. So there was a cyclonic situation in Scotland. Uh, very strong winds, uh, 65 mile an hour gusts and, and things like that. And that period of storminess in early September was originally forecast by us seven months ahead. Okay. Now, there were various people that popped up in newspapers who I would describe as charlatans, who said, oh, we knew this was coming and so forth. Well, you could see something was coming across the Atlantic, that is true. But that's it. Okay. The Irene remnant was then followed by a remnant of Katia, uh, which was just as intense, in fact, um, uh, and gave a lot of... Uh, well, very impressive wax uh, uh, at um, shorelines in, in, the, in the north of England, as well as uh, very strong winds. Um, the rest of uh, September was generally rather uh, cool and showery, as we predicted, uh, until near the end of the month, where there was a heat wave. Now, that heat wave was predicted 
by us in the long range, and it's very clear on the graph that we said this is the basically only warm part of, of September, certainly for the southeast where it would be warmest, we, we, we pointed out. Um, again, there were various people who popped up saying they'd known it was coming. The answer I can say is, well, they hadn't known until it was almost there. Uh, but we're very pleased with this particular forecast and also pleased with how we said it would end. We said it would end in some storms um, coming from across the uh, Atlantic. Now, the way it ended, though, was uh, even more interesting because it ended in two steps. We thought it was going to end in one step. So the uh, warmer part in north of England and Scotland was knocked out when we said it would be, and the particular sunspot region doing it was called Active Region 1302. Now, there were a lot of people on the web pointing out that 1302 was extremely active, and so I was very optimistic it would knock out the whole of the heat by changing the jet stream pattern in Britain in one go. But it didn't, and the very interesting thing was AR1302, what was coming from it, suddenly subsided. And we, did, we, were, we were frankly puzzled. Um, well, the next hit we were expecting was the 3rd to 5th of October, and that would coincide with what was then labelled uh, another region, 1305 on the sun. Now, no, uh, the American uh, satellite observers, NASA and so on, pointed out that they'd suddenly realised that these two sunspot regions are mixed together. They're entangled, they said. Now, it seems what happened is the activation we were expecting from 1302 essentially got delayed, wrapped up in things in space, and all came out in a great big deluge on the 3rd, 4th and 5th of October. And it looks like then that these entangled solar magnetic fields lead to bigger hits on Earth, and this is an important finding for the future. Because when it did hit, the uh, storm uh, of uh, October 4th, 5th was very significant. Uh, it, it reached 962 millibars for this time of the year, which is, is, is pretty low. Um, that was in the Norway Sea, and there was violent storm force 11 uh, in four sea areas at the same time as there had been severe gale force 9 in five sea areas. Now that is a big storm. Um, if it was a bit further south it would have been pretty damaging in Scotland too, but it wasn't, wasn't that far south. There was still disruption of uh, channel crossing, uh, uh, sea crossings in Scotland and so on, of course, but uh, um, not as bad as it would have been had it been further south, but the point is it was a big storm. And at the same time around the globe, there were other things. There was a horrendous uh, tornado, a rare, rarely extreme tornado in South Africa, uh, which killed people is on some video blogs. And there was also some other things happening in the general geomagnetic geosphere uh, situation, which we will talk about elsewhere. But that was a big hit, and we are pleased by its accuracy. So, now then, what about October? Um, First of all, for the USA, it's a very interesting month. What we're finding is a complete switch around from the previous month. And there's going to be a lot of very fine weather ongoing in the East USA. And then a sudden switch to a very cold blast right at the end of the month. Um, the timing of which is in our forecast. Um, there's also various things happening through the month, and if you want more detail, uh, which in, and it includes some severe storms, uh, bands of storms, uh, thunder, thunderstorm bands or tornado bands, if you like, uh, at 
defined times in defined areas. And I urge people to look on the full forecast via weatheraction.com for the USA extreme events uh, and maps, which is the same thing. Okay. For Britain and Ireland, what we're having in October is a north-south split, and we announced this some time ago to our subscribers. And interestingly, the Met Office is now describing next week's weather as a north-south split. And uh, what's going to happen is, uh, you've got to check the detail, but uh, often it will be finer in the south and warm, and uh, uh, not so warm, but much wetter in the north, but nevertheless not, not cold. So nowhere will match the forecast from some of the uh, uh, non-experts that are quoted by newspapers um, of a cold and dry October. That isn't going to happen. Where it's, uh, where it's dry, it's going to be warm. And where it's colder, it's in fact going to be wet. Um, there will be some periods of very significant storms in October. Not long periods, but some very significant storms during this month. Uh, and obviously we just had one of them, but there are more to come. Go on to the maps to, 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 to see more. And uh, after one of them, uh, uh, and later in the month, there will be a short, sharp cold blast, which will include some snow. But I would say it's not a big deal of, of, of snow. So this year, Climate Falls Day is on Wednesday, the 26th of October, and going to be held in the Houses of Parliament. Uh, meeting starting at 1, but people should get there at 12 to get through the security. We're going to have an interesting lineup of speakers. Um, we're going to firstly all, of all talk about, just again, show the CO2 theory doesn't work. None of its prognostications are borne out by reality. We talk about why it doesn't work. Um, and also some new ideas about what does work. Uh, there is important things you know about solar activity, but we've got some things to explain about the atmosphere uh, itself, which we'll reveal there, which you'll find extremely interesting. And then we go on to the main point of the meeting, is to show that the Climate Change Act and all that follows from it is a con to rob you. And it will cost you the earth, and it must be repealed. So please, come along, join us in the fight for objective, evidence-based science and policies. Wednesday, the 26th of October, Houses of Parliament, come there at 12, go through the main entrance for the St. Stephen's entrance, as it's called, the main entrance, and check on the website, weatheraction.com, for details of the place inside Parliament where it will be held, but it doesn't matter, you just come there at 12 and you will be directed. Thank you.